Alright guys, I thought it was time that we did another Unicorn Gundam video, and so I can talk about how to honestly just, you know, play this character even in situations where it can be a little bit difficult, like King of the Hill. So, how are we going to go about doing that? That's what we're talking about today. First off, you're going to not want to walk straight into a Marzai, those will mess you up. Um, it's okay to like look for some poke damage to see what you can output, but you do kind of have to be thinking about the fact that you do not deal nearly, nearly as much um, damage as some other things. Right? And you do always, always, always need to be like keeping your head on the swivel for flankers. On these sort of maps, it's very, very hard. But if you look at their composition, you see they have a Zaku, then it's time to be like constantly on the lookout for that. Essentially. If you're aware of them, you can kind of, you know, check them before they show up entirely. I think I hear this guy behind us. Yeah, I did. And just turn around, blast at him a little bit will get you a lot of extra value. Like even if just poking them out, like they don't have that much HP. If they're there, like and they don't they don't see you, then you're absolutely gonna get get rolled, right? If you don't see them. But if you do see them, then there's a very high chance that you'll be able to get them. Like at least like just a little bit of damage on them. Like knock them down a couple hundred HP and they'll they'll tend to be a little bit scared and back up. Unicorn Gundam does have a very big hitbox, so you do have to kind of understand that you are very vulnerable in general. Um they're pretty easy to kill overall. And until you have your ultimate available, you're kind of just, kind of just, you know, doing you, right? But we definitely don't need to be here anymore. We should be not here anymore, for sure. Okay. I guess, to be fair, in Gundam Evolution, everything is a sort of flanker. So you do kind of have to be thinking about that too. Like, Maris, I will also flank a lot. But anyway, you basically want to position yourself in a situation that's as defensive as possible, where you can be safe. And you're with your team, you need to be thinking about like where like the Marasai is, where the Zaku is, where is where is what is most likely going to flank on you, and you need to be watching for that. Use your armor to try and pack your teammates before the fight starts so that you know you can try your absolute hardest to use this. This guy's gonna ult us. Yeah, you can tell when they You can tell when they start getting like hyper aggro essentially. Are getting really really excited for their their opportunity to to hit that ability so they'll int into you like that and if you're like a squishier character you can avoid it you know by like running but if it's not you gotta kind of uh like if you're like a solid bristling you kind of just end up taking it to the face a lot so you know i think this is gonna be a pretty good video just because of the fact that we are looking like we're just taking a fat loss here but it's gonna be a good opportunity to like show you guys what you can do regardless in these situations and how you can turn fights that should you know games that should maybe be like automatic losses into into potentially winnable games so we need to like we're all peeling for this guy right now we're gonna get like no value out of that so now that you do have your ultimate it's honestly like your time to shine I'm gonna pack my teammates and I'm gonna go aggressive with it when we finally get the opportunity. Like we're so far back chasing those range Zaku, it's just not really a good strategy at all. I don't though. There's one kill, finishing that, and we'll throw another one down range just in case. Got a little bit of invent, a little bit inventive with that, but when you do finally use your ult like that, it's your time to shine. You know, it's your time to go and carry the game that you're, you've been feeling repressed about because you haven't been able to, to actually do anything until then. Wait, is it okay? <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, this game is looking, this game is looking really unique here. It was looking, this game's looking interesting, to say the least. Alright guys, so I decided to jump over to another game here because the last one um, I was basically just gonna keep getting rolled by that flanker over and over again. And the, you know, the final conclusion of that section of the game was just to, to swap, right? But, I figured I'd, I'd jump over to another game where you more realistically can play well on the character and um, there'll be more to learn from. So. Again, just to go back to the basics, you really, 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 really want to be trying to make sure you're consistently armoring your team before and after, like before the beginning of a fight when they're about to take damage, and then like right as 
it comes back online in the fight. As you can see right now in this situation, like I packed my little gun tank here because he was about to take some damage. By the way, guys, hitting people with this, um, this funnel's ability, hitting shield shield characters, it goes through the shield, and it's honestly kind of busted. Like, it just ends up being, like, that extra, like, chunk of damage that'll kill you a lot of times. Just because it does pierce through, so it's really, really useful to use. I give my little buddy here some, some shields. I can armor my little, uh, I can't armor myself to be here run away. You don't really want to be trying to like play in a position where you're going to get take too much damage. You do want to be with your team. I can sneak this res out. Armoring them, playing from within them, pumping damage into them. LOSing anything that's like way higher damage than you. Like as you can see this gem sniper keeps peeking. I know like the situation has obviously gotten a little bit rough but um, I shouldn't be trying to like 1v1 or anything you know. And when they push you back that far, it's better to just, uh, dip. If your team wants to go stay there and die, it's fine. Just let them go do that. I wouldn't go too crazy by yourself. I wouldn't, you know, like... Like, there's a time as a healer where you basically have to decide, like, do I want to, like... Oh, they're all going A. Who? Where you have to decide, like... How much value you're going to get by, like, staying with your team in a situation like that. I'm going to try and wipe this sniper, though. <laughs> I was trying to I was trying to hit a, a tech where if you dash and then press it your body keeps moving you aren't as easy to hit but I think I mess it up a little bit I don't really play unicorn Gundam very frequently so like in this map if you don't get them off the high ground you basically like lose so we're kind of looking at a little bit of a rough situation here and this is one of the things that gets a little bit frustrating in these sort of characters. All you can do is like facilitate your team doing something. You can't actually do it yourself. Like under no circumstances is really I'm going to be able to push out and take that that sniper out of that that, um, that position. Like I guess I could with my ultimate, but um, you know it's it's going to end in a much more disadvantageous situation. I don't really want to be trying to do that a lot. I guess we basically already lost this, so I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna try and like, you know, peek him a little bit, right? But I'm not gonna try and like go for everything here. Doesn't work out, so it's time to just hit. Play for next. And I'm also gonna die here, so better just try and die. See what I can get out of it, though. The mold charge, a kill. Maybe I can get two. <laughs> I just charged um like 30% of my ult off that. Also, you should never give your life up easily. And I'm not saying like, you know, you should be in a terrible position feeding just because, oh, I need to not die, I need to get my ult charge. But in a situation like that where they're selling to take this waypoint and they're not going to be able to like go to plant or anything like that. It's fine for me to like try and uh, live as long as I can and see what I can get out of it. That was an enemy. Obviously you can take another duel against a unicorn. I don't really, you know, expect that to happen too often, right? But it is something that when the situation arises like that, you can you can go for that. The resin, Abby. Guess I was at risk of him peeking me again and dying though. I'm almost lit for my team. I need to go back with them for sure. You really do want to just be playing with your team, like 
all the time where you're just not getting nearly as much value as you could be. Army roll from range. You want to watch these, um, watch these little points here either where they can try and score. The problem is I don't really have enough damage to stop that, which is why you don't really want me to be the only person to do that, but you kind of also got to understand that sometimes in this game, if you're like you, you know, you're the best thing that you have at the moment to deal with that situation. So you just, you just do it. Even if it's not ideal in the slightest. Well, this is not how I want this to go. Pretty low. Um, and you should always be trying to like, just make sure you really are using this little funnels ability and make sure you're using it in a way where it'll actually hit your enemies. It's surprisingly effective, especially against shields and will do like a healthy chunk of damage. So if you're like actually letting it hit, then it, it it's really good. Like it does seek onto things, but it won't, like it goes in like a more or less like direct route. So if you're using it, like, if you're using it in a way where, let me, let me show you guys the tech, you know, like that, yeah, you can move a little bit extra. Like I said, I only play the character like ever, so. Always want to make sure that uh, you're not going to get hooked by a Mara side, though, whoever. Whoever you are. Oh my gosh. Again, in that situation, as you could see, even though I was like 120 HP, I was trying to push back into that guy who was planting just because um even though i'm likely gonna die to do it if like three of us are likely about to die and we do it we can stop them from planting you know and then like the one person living still can actually like guarantee that they don't i love that character can guarantee that they um they aren't able to plant again after that We're winning this, so it's kind of an hour is our time to push, it looks like. Now, of course, we're kind of walking into this and this early. It's a little bit rough, but like, I most definitely cannot defuse this by myself. I need my team here. I if I'm going to get ulted. We need to be not, we need to go there as fast as possible. Like, people kind of need to understand, like, as soon as, like, as soon as things start getting a little bit silly, start getting about 20 seconds, 25 seconds, you need to, you need to get to the objective, like, ASAP, and you need to just have your tanks push as far up as they can to block as much as they, much of, like, the sidelines as they can, and have, if you have, like, a gym, have them stand forward, and, um, the other person defuses as they body block them. Like, it can be a little bit difficult when you have, like, a, when you have a barbatoes with the enemy team, because I can just kind of flash into you, or so even that sort of situation, you kind of need to like watch for barbatoes, but still work towards just diffusing as fast as possible. Like you can even do something like a bait, like they do in like Valorant, where they have like you know one of the teammates start like diffusing, and then they stop like a quarter of a second later just to bait the enemy into like trying to force an engagement versus them. Went a little bit too far. That is what happens. If you go a little bit too far, sometimes you just end up taking a lot of damage. Uh, I didn't really expect them to be like that aggressively playing forward, but we did get a, I got a little bit rolled there. I can be like that sometimes. I want my my Sazu to walk in with me. I'm gonna armor just assume we're going in. Oh, we're going in. Oh, let's go. What I did just there was kind of a little bit of a uh, 
I guess a little bit of a bait play too. I, I intentionally like dash forward a little bit just so that my Sazabi would go forward. Wow, that's already planting. I dash forward and then backed up immediately so my Sazabi would do the, would start walking forward. <laughs> just to get him into the right position essentially. And you always want to be making sure that you're keeping your uptime on your armor going. Ooh, you're not getting slapped in the face by Axios. Those kind of those kind of hurt, to be honest. Sometimes where they think auto targets is very strange. Armor's back up in the fight. Pop it. Well, Axios on top of me. I'm. Almost 100% dead. Well, we've secured it, so. The range on that slash is so obscenely large sometimes. And as you can see, I don't really want to be scoping down too far into like a gym sniper like that. Whatever they had down range. I think there's a gym sniper behind the pill rider. When you do have your ultimate available, you're really looking to like. Aggress on angles essentially. Take like a side angle where you're gonna be able to get like a lot of value out of like not that. <laughs> but where you're gonna get them on like a nice straightaway so that you can hit multiple people with your ultimate and basically like actually carry the game for once. Basically what you're playing into all the time is just preparing and trying to trying to get things as ready as possible. Like pushing through the right side here is a pretty decent way to like do that, so when you're mainly when you're planting on A. But I'm just gonna play from down here. And keep in mind if you watch my unicorn tech guide, you can drag the reticle right as you press the shoot button to disguise the real shooting location. Oh, rip Sazabi. Like at this moment, all you have to do is stop them from planting. Don't need to win a fight, don't need to kill anyone, just whatever comes down here, you just blow it up and stop them from planting. Like I'm not saying don't try and kill people, because it's still valuable obviously, but that's all that matters right there. Alright guys, now we're uh, doing our next little round here. I honestly just forgot to start commentating, so sorry, sorry about that, but uh, here we are. We're in the same situation. They're going to push this side. The sniper's going to have a huge, big, scary hold down ability. And you know what? I'm probably going to try and ego duel him again. So we're about to defuse the B. I'm going to keep marking this A because I know. Going to defuse that B. They're going to push us right back here. Plus, I can get some frags out here. Yeah, I'm gonna go for it, actually. No, I'm not, because Archie just took a bunch of big death. Yeah, I can make it. I'm gonna wait till my team's available, I'm gonna hit my own, I'm gonna go in. I think now's the time. Oh, yeah, I killed everyone. So what that really does there is it lets you get a huge value out of just throwing it through corridors in which people are most likely going to be. Like, I think, I don't, you know, I might have missed it, but somebody just dropped there and tried to get to the point when and then they ended up falling into my ability there. And just because of the ability, like the fact that I'm throwing it somewhere that's a priority target, a priority location for people to be, they'll end up just taking a lot of extra damage. And so that's why it's really useful to be like throwing unicorns all down these corridors that are just very frequently passed and stuff like that, or other really valuable areas where enemies are clumped up. All right, so now we're hitting our attack here. We have uh, seven minutes to capture 90% of the first point. 
Gosh, this game lasts so long, man. More screen shake, too. We could turn that off. No, we sure they added a setting where you can turn it off, and it, it's amazing. A infrequent W from that game. We're definitely winning this game. Unlike that first one. Dang. I'm gonna go over here to my teammates. And we ain't gotten a plant on A. The Barbatos is going behind, which I don't I don't really, you know, like that play this, but I literally knew that's happening and I just nothing I could do about it. I saw that he's kinda of far away from me. Like I tried to go get to him so I could tell him. Or I'd try and get him armor, but it made my it made me position poorly. I do really, 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 really not like the fact that you start at fifty percent old charge on the second round. It gives like a huge advantage to whoever's attacking. Um, which makes it so whichever team was winning that attacks that defends first has a disadvantage. They get less value out of their uh, that of playing well earlier in the game. And we win. If you're looking for some more Gundam Evolution videos, then make sure to check out my mobile suit guides. I made one for all original the 14 mobile suits, and I did a Should You Main Guide series also covering the same mobile suits and talking about whether you should actually main them in Gundam Evolution or not.